Hi, I'm Tim. I'm Rinda. Um, whoa, I'm Rinda. <laughs> Froggy Rinda. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. Oh, I tell you. My nose is healing. Wait, we're hardiness approach. Oh, yeah. We're <laughs> and my nose is healing, if you saw the last video. So it's uh, it's progressing. Uh, I'm out of my 48 hours of couch potato-ness. Yay. <laughs> so. Today, what we'd like to do is talk to you about what it is like to be on an androgen deprivation therapy. ADT. ADT, or Eligard, or... Um, hormone therapy. Yeah, it's a hormone therapy. So when you get prostate cancer, that's one of the first things that they put you on. And depending on what your doctor does, they'll put you on for a short term or a long term. Jim is on for a short term. That said... Less side effects. Yes. That said, a six month one, which is Eon, can last up to a year in his body. So I'm pretty sure you know that. Yeah. <laughs> so what we'd like to talk about is if your doctor is going to put you on it, what you can expect and what you need to do to be proactive. And Jim's going to tell you all the things that he does. But let me just tell you a little bit about how this works. Uh, when you get a shot, and it is a shot, and it goes into the belly, and it's very... It's painful. Painful. It's a big needle, lots of goop that they put in there. Yeah. And he had to have ibuprofen to get it to stop. So, yeah. When you're going to have that, what you need to do first is ask your doctor to put you on bicalitamide. Uh, we'll put that on the screen. Can you put that is on the screen? Is it calitamide? It is. Oh, wow. 50 milligrams. He went on I'll it. I'll see if I can put it on the screen. Okay. If not, it'll be in the show notes. Look at, just look in the Definitely show notes. Definitely look in the show notes. He uh, was put on that two and a half to three weeks before he got the Eligard. This is why you want to do it. The Eligard, when you get it, it increases your testosterone. So it can actually increase your the, cancer. The, the doctor called it a flare. Mm -hmm. Yes. So if you've got increased testosterone, the doctor said that increased testosterone can make a man more aggressive, more sexual, and more, I can't remember. Anyway, whatever testosterone does, it whoosh, Okay? He said it's not pleasant. So by putting you on this oral medication, which s blocks the cancer in the, the cell, it blocks the cancer in the, in the cell to grow, um, it takes that flare away. It, it, it prevents the testosterone from... Flaring. From, not from flaring, but from the cancer cells taking it up and using it. Feeding it. Right. But it also makes it so that you don't experience the flare. Right. You, you didn't, right? No. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. I didn't. <laughs> he, he didn't. Nothing's different happened. Right. So, so he's, he had the uh, hormone injection four weeks ago today. Tomorrow's a month. Um, and so let's talk about some of the side effects. So some of the first side effects you'll feel, and it was really three weeks at least before he felt it, is some hot flashes coming in. So just like a woman has hot flashes when her estrogen level goes down, a man has hot flashes when his testosterone level goes down. And how has that been? Um, oh, it's been exciting. <laughs> you know, they, they haven't been awful. It's just all of a sudden I'm like, boy, we need to turn the temperature down in here. And then in a little while it's gone. Uh, I get clammy, uh, wake up at night sometimes clammy. I, I've done that before, but this is like multiple times so per, per night. And it's something I've been dealing with for 30 years. So I'm like, it's a nuisance, but you'll live. <laughs> yeah. The other thing that we noticed is that uh, when your testosterone level goes down, you don't have all of the 
male emotions, you have more female emotions. That's what they say, and I'm not sure what that means. But what, what I do know that's happened is, uh, and this may be not totally related to the, the testosterone being decreased as a result of this, but uh, if I get, I don't want to say fatigued, but uh, drained to where I, it, it's been a long day, it's been a frustrating day, at some point, um, in an unusual way for me, I, I just can't think, I can't reason, I can't uh, figure things out and I don't want to, I, where usually it's like, let's get it done, let's find a way, let's solve it. And I just get to the point, I'm like, you know what? It's not there. I can't do it. And it's weird. It's a weird feeling, but it's very real. So, there are some other things that will come in. Let me tell you what some of the side effects are, and then Jim's going to tell you what he does to combat those side effects. You're going to have muscle pain, um, bone and muscle loss, severe bone and muscle loss, um, extreme fatigue, and that is because of the loss of the muscle, um, hot flashes, okay, your cholesterol can increase, you get increased belly fat, and increased blood sugar, and all of those can lead to some eventual heart problems. So you're looking at people that don't even hardly take an aspirin or a Tylenol um, got, have, are put on this. So there are some ways that he can combat this so that he won't feel these things. Right. One of the big things that I've done to prevent the fatigue, the muscle loss, the bone density loss, and, and that type of thing uh, is exercise, doing weight-bearing uh, using weight strengthening types of exercises. Push-ups. Uh, yeah, push-ups, uh, using weights, and, and I have a series of things that I do. Uh, and, and I know it, one previous video I promised on the beaches at uh, Marbella, not Marbella, uh, Mallorca, I was, and there wasn't, there weren't any beaches. Um, there were piers, <laughs> too many people around. I was not going to do it there. <laughs> but I was going to do some of the example exercises, and I may yet do that. Um, we'll, we'll see. Now, one interruption to that this last couple of days with the surgery that went on with this and here for a few more days, I've got to be careful about being strenuous. She said I can return uh, to but the exercising I was doing, but what I don't want to do is to open up uh, anything that, that's gone on here. So I've got to be careful about straining. Uh, so I can start working out, just keep it going, but that's, that's been a big help. Okay, so let me tell you how, much, how diligent he is. I mean, it's like 45 minutes every morning he's been doing this. Um, my understanding is if you do two or three times a day for an hour of weight bearing or exercises, that's supposed to be doing it. But it's better for him if he does 45 minutes a day. If you take a holiday from it, you will, you will find severe muscle loss quickly. You'll lose it faster than you gain it. That, that's the reality, which is um, the opposite of what happens with what she was talking about around the middle with, with the, the belly fat from the cholesterol and so forth. Um, we have been careful uh, for a long time about processed foods, about sugars, about excessive carbs. And that effort has been increased dramatically. Uh, I've been unbelievably careful about what I'm eating. Lots of vegetables to keep that Eat balance juices. out. I've been doing juicing to, with vegetables to, to increase that. And, you know, here is the opposite of muscle loss and muscle gain with exercise or no exercise is that if if you eat a little bit and don't do anything to counteract that, you're, you're going to gain weight faster than you can lose it, which is the opposite of gaining muscle slower than you'll lose it. So mm -hmm. it, it seems unfair. It's not a good balance, but that's how it works. And it really is. And, 
and every doctor, the Mayo Clinic, Harvard, when you go to them and look at this, every one of them will say that the solution to being on hormone therapy is exercise. And it, 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 if he exercises, he's not as tired. And they mentioned that the, the <clears throat> proper diets. Are oh, yes, too. for sure. So, so um, if you have questions, go ahead and ask them. We'll see if we can answer them. But if you're going to be going on hormone treatment, that helps you understand it a little bit better. You have to be diligent in your part, and then it's not going to affect you as much. Now, let me interject something here, and, and I, I think doing this in every video probably wouldn't be inappropriate, but I know a lot of people can point out individuals who have had prostate cancer and lived to an old age with it and really didn't have treatment. Uh, and that can happen. That can truly happen. The, and the same thing with the skin cancer and the melanoma that I had. Not the melanoma. Some melanoma, you, if it doesn't get in deep into the skin, if it's just on the surface, melanoma is not going to do that. Melanoma is eventually going to go. Yeah, melanoma deep. is dangerous. But with the skin cancer and with the prostate cancer, people can, well, can live a long time with it and not have any problems, any uh, difficulties. But for those who have that cancer spread, metastasized to other parts of the, to other organs, to their bones, and then grow there, those are the people who have a really tough time. Many of them die. Uh, that's just a reality. So for those who have been fortunate enough for that not to happen, that's great. It, I, I'm thrilled for that. I don't want to take that chance. It's, well, he it's, also, if it stays inside of the prostate, it's fine, but his has come out into the seminal vesicles. Yeah. So when you're already out, you can't mess around with yeah, it. Yeah, we know so. it's on its way, and uh, you know that's not where I want to go. The treatments for this right now are uh, not that difficult. I mean, they're not something I am excited about. Uh, not in what I've had to go through so far, and it's going to be worse going forward. But it's far better than if we just allow it to run rampant and do, do whatever it may end up doing. And um, the promise is, the indication is, the statistics show that with doing these three um, treatments, modalities that they are doing, 95% uh, of the people who go through that live for another 12 years with no problems with the cancers. Uh, and, you know, beyond that, most of them are old enough, other things start catching up, and so they, you know, statistically they can't measure too, too well beyond that. But my thought is that the way cancer treatment has advanced, especially prostate cancer treatment, in the last 10 years, if during these next 10 years while they're watching me, if anything shows up as, as metastasizing and, and uh, the seeds that they that were there that hadn't started growing when they did the treatments start to raise their heads uh, the treatment capabilities will be better then than they are now even so it encourages me that I'll be able to get the treatment I need to live a, a healthy life uh, but it, we're gonna have to watch it we can't just ignore it so that's today's episode. Anything else? <laughs> I think that's enough. Hey, thanks for watching. We appreciate it very much. And like Rinda said, if you have questions, ask away. We don't know all the answers, but we're in a position to talk to people who do. So we can get the answers. And, and I know there's a lot of folks facing these kinds of things. And, you know, we're, we're in your corner with you. Take care.